Hey, this is Andrew Brown from ExamPro, and we are looking at step functions which allow you to coordinate multiple AWS services into serverless workflows. Or another way of thinking about it is creating a state machine with microservices. So here we are taking a look at step functions. And the first thing we need to know before understanding it is understanding what a state machine is. So a state machine is an abstract model which decides how one state moves uh, to another based on a series of conditions. So think of a state machine like a flowchart because that's exactly what it is and what it looks like. Uh, and so coming to talking about what is step function. So step function coordinates multiple AWS services into a serverless workflow. Uh, it's a graphical console to visualize the components of your application as a series of steps. It automatically triggers and tracks each step, uh, retries them when there are errors, so your application executes in the order as expected every time. And it logs the state of each step, so when things go wrong, you can diagnose and debug problems quickly. And so here's an example from uh, Step Functions, where we have this uh, visual workflow here. Uh, and you can see there's a bunch of different steps. And it might not be clear what AWS services, underlying AWS services, are being used in those steps, but you can code in pretty much uh, a handful of services there, which we'll dig into more right now. All right, before we move on to use cases with step functions, let's talk about the two types of state machines we get to choose from. So when you make a step function, you have to choose a state machine, and we have standard and express. Standard is for general purpose stuff, and express is for streaming data kind of stuff. So uh, looking at standard here, AWS recommends it for durable, checkpointed workflows for machine learning, order fulfillment, IT, DevOps automation, ETL jobs, and other long duration workloads, so long workloads. And then looking at Express, and Express just came out, um, and this is for event-driven workflows for streaming data processing, microservice or orchestrations, IoT uh, data ingestion, mobile backends, and short duration high event rate workloads. And when we get into the fall along, we'll look at these uh, in better comparison because there is a huge difference between these two uh, here. Uh, and they have a nice big chart there when we're creating uh, our step functions. So another thing uh, I want to point out is that you can execute steps in parallel. So if you have a bunch of steps that are dependent on each other before you wanted to move to the next step, that is something you can do. Uh, so you, you, things don't just have to be sequential. Uh, and the last thing is that uh, the way you uh, define your, your uh, steps or your states is through this Amazon states language, which is written in JSON. Uh, so you do that visual editor, but you have to go and do this part. And this part is a bit of a pain, but uh, the, uh, the step functions uh, console does give you a bunch of uh, templates to start off with. Um, so it does ease that pain a bit, but there is that work involved. So now we can move on to use cases.